What's going on YouTube? It's been a minute since I've done a video like this, but it's about time that I get back to the roots of this channel, which is uh, just showing you something actually useful when it comes to uh, repairing a 3D printer and or giving you a tip. So today we have a A1, and this also applies to the A1 Mini, and the presenting problem is uh, the, the part didn't stick to the plate, it ran for many hours, and created a nice little mess here. Now I've already gone and taken some of these screws off, but uh, in the middle of doing that, I was like, oh, now that I've done this several times, I kind of got the, the gist of it down pretty quickly, and I figured I'd share that. So the first steps are gonna be remove your nozzle. Then you can also remove these three screws here, which are uh, these three screws. They will also come with your replacement part here. And as you can see, this part here has a big long cable. This cable goes to the back uh, here. So we have to get to that. Now, why is this loose here, if you notice? It's because we've taken these three here. So it's only three bolts to then get this off. And that keeps our extruder uh, assembly together, but unmounted from the, uh, from the X assembly there. And that's important because the little cables just come right back up in here. And I'm forgetting if I do or don't need to take the fan off. I think I'm going to try to do this without taking the fan off. I don't think we do. But the fan's only two bolts. Not that big of a deal if we do need to remove it. But we'll do this together. Um, on the back here, you're going you're gonna to need two sizes of uh, Allens. Just the standard bamboo size that comes with it. And then the smaller one, it may have come with your kit. might not have. But you will need to likely remove this it'll just make it a little easier um, so it's four screws here and it is important to keep these a little separate and or watch a video like this because I have had several people go in and take this apart mostly uh, children who, who you, you know all the power to them and wanting to learn and repair their own machine but then uh, after doing it they forget exactly where it goes and it is possible to, uh, to, to accidentally put them in the wrong spot, which can cause an issue. So once you have your USB-C cable removed, um, we can go to the back here of the motherboard and still using the small one, we can, you know, we might actually not have to have done that. Let me see. So the, the biggest kind of sneaky, sorry, my camera skills are terrible. The biggest kind of sneaky part of this is getting this piece off. So specifically, it's this, this uh, right here, this whole side piece needs to come off, and that generally I can get it by just let me see, forcing it there. Maybe uh, let's see. I'm not normally doing this one-handed, so I've got to I've got to figure out how to film it and do it one-handed. Let's see. Can I kind of push on this? Yeah, there we go. So I just use my Allen to kind of pop that out. You'll pop that completely off. Okay. So we have that piece off, we've got those pieces off. I took this USB-C off, probably preemptively. So we're going to take that plug off, which is this one, very identifiable. Yeah, see, I didn't even need to do that. Like, this is a lot easier than when I first did it. I think I took this whole dang thing apart when I first did it, and it was unnecessary. So I just unnecessarily took those four bolts off. So you do not need to take that off. Um, in fact, I don't even think you need that second smaller one. But now we have this off. So now the new one we can just do the exact reverse and put our new one let's just plug it in first and boom and then that's gonna run right down this little length here you'll kinda shove it in there and you'll bring it down now I'm so sorry my camera skills they're atrocious this would be a good one for maybe one of the employees that I uh, I just hired to film this while I actually do it that might man I'm really I'm really trying I'm sorry I need to like the trick is either doing the repair while watching it through the camera or doing it while you keep the camera steady and it looks good but it is very important that you get these back underneath that little uh, that little clip there because otherwise you'll be pinching them once you put this back together and you don't want to pinch them. I think this one too. Pretty sure that one needs to slide up under there. I think it slid out when we pulled the other ones out. So I'm just using the Allen to kind of 
push and position those back into place. We'll kind of put that back into position and it popped out again, so now I'm going to push it back. One more time, come on, get it this time. I just need to kind of kind of bend this. So this is the process you'll have to go through, is making sure that you uh, kind of, damn it. As soon as I got that one, that one wanted to pop out. You little goofball, get in there. Oh, come on, I'm just making it worse. Even worse again. Even worse again. Okay. So, hopefully you have a better time with that. I think that's just going to be good enough. So, what we're going to do now is just ensure... Let me see. I really need, like, two hands for this. Because I need to position this, but I also need to get those wires underneath. And we can see that the wires popped off again. So, let's see if we can get it under this one real quick. We're just going to kind of... And there we go. Alright. Shove that up in there. Maybe that'll help this one to stay up in there a little further. Shove that in there. Come on. Come on. No, oh, I'm so sorry. Again. Feel free to, in the comments, talk trash about how terrible I am at uh, doing this video and videoing myself. I'm, I'm really hoping this is useful to y'all. Okay. So now, I really, I, I kind of need to set this down. Can I even... Ah, this would just be nice if I cared enough to get a freaking phone stand. Maybe I'll get on Amazon and for Black Friday I'll buy a phone stand so I can stop being a terrible, terrible host of a cameraman with my own dang videos and whatnot. That, that would really eliminate all this shake and me only trying to work with one hand which is interesting to say the least <laughs> i'm getting <laughs> okay we're just gonna set this down and it, it it is what it is guys i'm sorry i hope you can see it i know you probably can't but i've got to just push this into place and then land one screw and then double check that I didn't pinch anything. Okay. Now, be careful with this. Do not over torque these. You're only going into plastic on the majority of stuff, so you just barely need finger tight. You can easily strip this, um, you, you know, like looking at these, these are coarse thread. They are coarse thread because they're threading into a polymer slash plastic. You have a steel screw and plastic and big strong human hands no matter what build and type you are. Um, you can easily strip these in every literal place that a screw can go. So just be careful, get it just barely tight and stop. Like I pretty much felt myself I think going a little too tight there. This is the only one that you could potentially go just a little bit tighter is right on these because they actually go into uh, threaded inserts so it is metal on metal but those threaded inserts are still inserted into plastic and you can pull them out of the plastic so don't do that uh, and and just just be yeah you know like as, as as much as I've manhandled these machines and I get feedback from some of my clients when they watch me do a repair they're like oh wow I was so gentle with this I didn't know that I could just you know, really toss it around or, you know, lift up on the on the whole y-axis bar or x-axis bar or this or that, like, as much as you can manhandle these, you definitely don't want to manhandle, you know, over tightening your screws. But that's it. That's right there. So if you accidentally got a bunch of junk, now we didn't replace this just because the junk's on it. You know, that junk on there, what I would have done is heated it up and uh and and straight replaced it but somewhere somewhere in that which we'll examine in just a second once i get done with this um we'll see i'm so sorry again my camera skills i'm looking in real life instead of through the camera okay but that's how it should look now we're done skis okay so somewhere in this the cables actually broke and the 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 temperature sensor was not currently working it looks like right here maybe um, so the temp sensor got ripped out, wasn't reading the right temp, and would not heat up accordingly. If it could have heated up, the, the simple quick fix is to just heat it up and scrape all that stuff off and be careful. 
not to uh, to damage your wires. Now I've replaced many like that where I've I've done that. Oh, and I might have fibbed. So one, two, three, four. It's four to get it off. If someone already in the comments, uh, you, you know, looked at that and was like, oh, he's wrong. You know, I was. I did take one more off that I forgot to notice uh, before I started the video. But yeah, there's there's the fourth. Now I have all four of those on. I unnecessarily unplugged this. Now it's plugged back in. Now I will put this back together. And oh Jesus, again my camera skills just really scold me and tell me like how much more you would appreciate it if I actually cared enough to have like a phone stand and or you know someone else film like if it would mean a lot to you if it, if it would really improve these videos that that you would like it um that would that would uh, help motivate me to uh, you know when I say do a better job I mean by acquiring better equipment so that this is just easier to do because it's it's a little tricky to do I mean we got to kind of get around on this we got to look on the back we got to we got to get on the side so it um and again up here be gentle i've over tightened these myself before it's not too big a deal if you do um if you accidentally lose some pieces you know it's probably okay if you only have three or even two screws here it's gonna be okay if you you know if you're missing a screw somewhere else in most places i've seen a couple of these a couple of times and i've even put one together for myself back or I just missed a screw, but now I have a bunch extra, so you can always come to me and I'll find the uh, the missing screw. And wow, look at that rain outside. Sorry, squirrel at the moment, but like, it is a gorgeous amount of rain. I am very happy about that, and on my screen I'm literally playing, you know, not right now because I'm doing a video, but I'm playing a little chill vibe rain lo-fi. And it, so it's just a very subtle amount of rain in the background playing through my speakers while uh, the, the lo-fi and the bass and I'm listening to the bass all turned up. But then I have a second video playing that has a heavy, heavy thunderstorm. And I've got that turned down about 30% because it was the rain was so loud it was drowning out the music. But now I have a really cool rain vibe with, uh, with a really intense thunderstrike and thunderstorms. I love the sound of... Of thunderstorms and thunder strikes, so um, you know, you know, to 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 play that and accentuate it even further on a rainy day is just real fun to me. And uh, yeah, then when you go to put this back on here, you just gotta make sure you don't pinch it, and you snap her in place right there like that. And one more little clip right here. Get your hand around where you can get to it. And the satisfying click. Oh, come on. I thought that was about to be it. I'm trying to, like, capture this moment. There it is. Satisfying, right? And then we got our back plate. And the back plate does go on one way. If you're curious on which way it goes, it, uh, there's only two clips on the bottom. And you can see, wait, am I right? There's only one clip on the bottom right here. And that lines up with it, and then everything else just kind of click, click, click. It's back together. And now we just need to toss a nozzle on it, which I have, I think, I think right here. Let us see. Yeah, we have us a nozzle, and the nozzle goes like this. And it is very, very important, whether you clean a mess like this or you just get here, that this nozzle is seated really tightly. Now you'll see that, you know, it might have just a smidgen of movement, and that's okay. The point is, is that you click it, and it clicks in just like that. Let me get that on camera, because that's very important. But, you know, not like this. That is not tight. It has to be like that. That pulls it down, that pulls it taut and now you can't uh you know it's not going anywhere that is correct and the right way to do things and we throw a new sock back on it and this printer 
is now officially repaired and ready to go back into service and unfortunately this is just trash so into the trash and put all that back up we'll probably run just a little test print on this just to be a hundo percento sure client might show up either late today or tomorrow to pick this up but i will be giving her a phone call now shortly and uh yeah yeah that's that's how to repair a a1 a1 mini um hot end heating assembly so thanks for watching hopefully that was helpful if you need to uh, do it yourself um oh yeah and last step is just where where the face of it go whoa <coughs> oh, excuse me got a little heartburn there i don't I don't know where what I did with the face or if it came with the face. I might not have. The face is actually not that important. I imagine the only thing it's effectively functionally good for is just directing a little bit more air airflow over the heat brake, but I know they'll operate just fine without it. So don't feel bad if you lost yours. Um, I'm hoping the client took it with her. If not, it could be under the sub, but I don't feel like getting on my knees while on camera. So, uh, <laughs> and uh, wait a second, what is this? What the f- What? What the heck? They've been operating this thing with these? <laughs> I just noticed this. Those definitely should have been removed. <laughs> and I can only imagine that they were causing some friction. I mean, look at the scraping it did. My goodness. Had no idea. Those goobers. Um, they accidentally left on the uh, shipping brackets totally unnecessary i guess let's make sure yeah no no foam underneath right <laughs> all right kathy we uh we'll get you your printer back um better than the way you brought it in in more ways than one so thank you guys like share subscribe um let me know your comments on that and we will have more videos for you coming soon